Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. Brought to you by Blue Sky Business Consulting. We discuss five questions in about 15 minutes. Hello again, everyone. Glad you are with us here for the Team Engagement Podcast. And I'm very grateful for our to, to our guest today for taking time to join me. This is Bill Lennon. He is the founder of 40% Better out of Campbell, California. So, Bill, thank you so much for taking time to join me on the podcast. What would you like the audience to know about 40% Better? We are a leadership training organization. Um, and we it's a my perspective and our perspective is that excellent leadership, which leads to employee engagement should be looked at as a consistent, repeatable process, just like math. Um, We're leveraging a whole bunch of stuff, mostly the processes I've been using for 20 years here in Silicon Valley to have very highly engaged, but also very high performing teams, which tends to make the executives happy. It does. Yes, I agree. Executives like the high performing teams and highly engaged employees. That's for sure. (laughs) Yeah, it's a win all the way around. Oh, it yeah. definitely is. Well, this will be a great conversation then because that's uh, a lot of what we're talking about is leadership and teams yeah. today. So well, let's jump to it. Bill, yeah. obviously with business owners especially, how or even in any leadership capacity, how does a person know when to pivot, when to make a change? There, there's, there's a couple different answers that I can think of off the top of my head. One of them is if your clients are are all saying you should be going in this direction, then pay attention, right? I've been at companies in the past where we went in a particular direction based on um, what our paying audience wanted us to do. Like they were very, very clear that the place they that they wanted us to go was something we weren't delivering. And that if we went in that direction, they would give us more money. Mm-hmm. And and that's, it's just, it's an ROI thing, right? To, to be able to do that. Um, and there's also sometimes when it's internal to the company where your team, like remote teams, for example, right? Um, I've worked at companies where we didn't have remote teams, except that all of a sudden people really wanted to be able to work remote. And we figured out how to have, and this was way before the pandemic. We figured out how to make that happen, how to be successful. And we got better engagement too. I mean, it was a win all the way around. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Great comment because it uh, it can be a challenge for sure. But I like what you're suggesting yeah. here that we need to pay attention to what what our clients are telling us, what the customers are telling us, what the industry, what the uh, market, yeah. whatever else. Got to got to pay attention is really the short yeah. version of that. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Question number two. If you would share with the audience one of your company's core values and how that value helps you to make decisions. So. That's super easy. One of our core values is that the, the primary function of leadership is to make your team happy and high producing at the same time. Um, this has been a key piece of my leadership journey since I started running teams here in Silicon Valley. Um, and so everything that we do, that's a, that's a data point. Whatever we're doing as a company, one of the really important parts is how does it impact the team? Mm-hmm. And whether it's you know, a business decision, um, a product design decision, infrastructure decision. It's it's always that's a piece of it, and it's and it's because everything I've seen has been it when the when the you take the, the employees into account as you're doing stuff, mm-hmm. they feel a sense of ownership. Yes, and when they have ownership, they don't just throw their hands up in the air and say, I have no control. They actually proactively and positively engage in processes and in improving situations because I don't know everything. And, and, and I'm, there's always going to be stuff that I don't see. And I want my team to really be, oh, hey, there's an opportunity over here. Like, you know, whatever it is we're doing, like over there, wow, that, that looks like it could be really cool. Or there's a trap over here. Yeah. Right. There's a there's a really negative thing here. And and I, I know that I can't see it all. And so for me, it's always about relying on my team for for that vision, that 360 degree perspective. So I always want them to be included. I really like that because uh, happiness is something that is 
uh, eluding a lot of people and a right. lot of companies right now. And so I like that, uh, that not only is that one of your core values, but you're proactively and intentionally making that part of the decision-making process. And I love the fact that you're having the, uh, uh, the ownership to a degree yeah. of, of that. I really like that, that approach because I think it makes a big difference in the engagement of the employees if they feel oh, like. Yeah, it's, oh. yeah, it's, it's such a critical piece. And I'm one, one, an, another piece of this is I never want to be the smartest person in the room. Mm, yeah. Because even if I, even if I am for some reason, like I don't want anybody in the team to feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I really want, because again, it's back to ownership, right? The more they have ownership, then, then the better outcomes we get. And so when there's a problem that needs to be solved, I'm not the first one to talk, right? And if we're mm -hmm. going to go in a direction, I want them to have a very high degree of um, alignment that they arrive at mostly on their own. Yeah. Without, without me saying I'm the boss and we're going that way. Right. right. No, it makes a huge yeah. difference. I completely agree. That's, that's fantastic. Great information. All Thank right. You. For those who are kind of in the hiring mode right now, yep. what is one tip that you have for business owners and leaders to not only find, but then hire good talent? Yeah. So um, if I've already got people on my team that are, that are good, that are, that, are, that are providing quality contribution to the team. I wanna know their friends. Um, and, and I wanna know what their friends are looking for. And maybe I'll end up poaching their friends from somebody else. Yeah. Totally fine doing that. Yeah. But, but, but really it's, it's leveraging the network as much as possible mm -hmm. um, for finding talent. And then for, for hiring, in the interview process, um, I tend to not ask skill-based questions. I ask a lot more questions about problem solving and um, struggles and what they learned from failure. Like I want to hear the failure stories and what did you learn from it? Because I know that people that have had struggles and they've learned from it and they've, they've progressed are going to be more resilient and that when we have struggles, which we all do in business, right, it's not going to be a, a big emotional tax for them because they're going to go, oh, like, I, I, this is a struggle. I had a struggle last week, two days ago. Like it's going to be, a, they're going to be like, this is normal, right? And so rather than spinning cycles, bemoaning the struggle, they're going to jump to, oh yeah, it's a struggle. It's part of life. Let's go solve the problem. And, and I want, I want as much of their mental cycles as possible to be free from the emotional charge of this shouldn't have happened, that struggle shouldn't happen. Right. And, and yeah, oftentimes this comes with experience. Right. Um, but also, you know, like I've hired uh, fresh college grads who had that perspective. And for them, they were like, yeah, this is struggle, just normal. And they can give me five examples of horrible failures and how they recovered. And I'm like, okay, your, your head's in the right place because right. people can learn skills mm -hmm. like on the job. Right. And they learn really fast on the job. And so I, I really don't care on day one, if, if you have a skill or not, you know, like if I'm hiring a coder, they have to written code in some language. Nope. But if they don't know our stack, it's no big deal. Right. The, I know they'll get up to speed really quickly. Yeah. I really like that. That's a great response to uh, what I, you know, we, in the industry, you and I know this, it's uh, emotional mm -hmm. resilience and being able to tackle something emotionally that uh, you weren't prepared for necessarily. And I right. uh, get those setbacks along the way. And sometimes they're universal, like a pandemic. And sometimes they're specific to your job. And you're the only one experiencing it that, at that time. But, uh, but it really makes a big difference. And I like your approach to not be so skill-focused uh, during the interview process, but to really focus on, in, in your case, resilience, emotional, uh, just more what I'd call higher to culture. 
and uh, yeah, really yeah. like that. Really like that. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, Bill, question number four, within your company, how do you identify and then develop strengths within the people and the employees? Um, so part of it is, I'm a huge fan of doing one-on-ones every week. Um, oh, great. And, and it's, it's so they can talk to me. Like, I want to know what's going on in their head. What are their struggles? What are their desires? How can I make their life better? And part of it is about building up the trust so that they can be vulnerable when we're having a one-on-one to, you know, like to be able to say, uh, I'm taking my kid to school and it makes it really hard for me to get to our first team meeting of the day. Can we move that back 30 minutes? I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, I've, I've had this happen where, you know, parents have said, I'm really struggling to make sure. And I've, you know, like they've been coming into team meetings in their car doing mobile zooms, yep. right. Which always makes me a little nervous because I don't want their, just their attention to be right on driving the car. Right. Right. I'd, I'd much rather move the meeting 30 minutes later and give them plenty of time to get home and have a cup of coffee and, yeah. you know, be, have it's, their head in it. Yep. Um, so to one-on-ones, I always get to find out what's going on, but also the flip side is I really recognize the value of helping them with their weaknesses mm. because if they have a desire to improve somewhere and they, and it's a weakness for them, I want to figure out how to help them level, level that up and give them an environment where they can practice and, and um, get incremental improvements in that area. Because one of the things that I've noticed is that the people that are T-shaped, right? They've got expertise in one place, but they've got a broad set of skills end up being more valuable in the company. Yes. And, and if you only play to your strengths and so you're just vertical, you don't have as good an ability to solve problems because you don't have the breadth to be able to pull ideas from other contexts and say, oh, wait a minute, totally different scenario, but I, but this might work. Right. <laughs> and I, 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 you know, it goes back to our fundamental thing about resilience and being able to solve problems. Right. If you've got a broad, a broad experience and you solve problems in a bunch of contexts, then you can ease much more easily pattern match and go, Oh, this problem, it's like, 25% this problem that I solved once before and 50% this problem that I solved once before and 30% this other problem. That's pretty close to pretty all close. of it. I've only got a little bit of a gap to figure out, right? Versus somebody who'd never had any of those, they'd be at 100% of like, I have no idea what no to idea. do. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I'm, so I'm trying to figure out how to, how to get people broader and able to how to how do you narrow up the ignorance gap as much as possible? Yeah. So I so for me it's it's about both. And I'm very proactive about where do you want your career to go? Mm. Like that's one of those things that I always want to know is okay, Sean, wh- what do you want to do next? Yeah. Right. And and re- literally I don't care what your answer is. Like I I've every time I've been able to, I've I've helped people move in whatever direction. Um, I, I, one of my engineers, I had a guy come to me one time and say, you know, I'm, in one of our meetings, he's like, I'm just not feeling it anymore for coding. And I was like, okay, what do you want to do next? And he said, I don't know. I said, well, we got a whole company here. We've got all kinds of stuff we do. Put in your calendar an hour every week and go talk to people in different departments and go research the whole company. Like go talk to everybody, make it a recurring meeting. I give you my blessing, go figure it out. Wow. And he came back six weeks later and said, I know this sounds weird, but I'm really fascinated by sales. I think I might want to go work with that sales team. Like, how do I do it? And I said, well, let me go talk to the guy that runs it. I'll see if I can get you a seat to shadow somebody and work with somebody for a week. And he was like, really? And I said, yeah, I'll, you know, like, we'll figure out a way to make it happen. No, that's impressive. And it, he ended up moving there and became one of their best salespeople. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, he and his knowledge stayed in the company. 
And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of institutional knowledge staying in the company mm -hmm. because I've seen how it ex how expensive it is yeah. when the knowledge leaves and and nobody knows that Mary had this piece of knowledge. Mary's gone. Nobody knows. Yeah. And now what? Now, mm -hmm. yeah. And and in some cases, nobody even knows it's possible. And that's the that's the worst case when when people think, oh, it's impossible because there's no person around to go. Oh, yeah, we know we know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. One on ones really are powerful. Oh yeah, they're huge. They're really yeah. critical. Yeah, I like that you're doing that. Yeah. Impressive. All right. Well, our our last question, a fun question. Tell us a little bit about your uh, first job. So my first job was um, driving drinks around a golf course. Oh, <laughs> yeah, in a golf cart. Um, and uh, I think I was 13 at the time. And it was through the power of networking. Um, somebody I knew was was doing these was um, hosting these private golf golf events, kind of as uh, this side gig thing. Yeah. And he was like, hey, I need somebody who can drive to the different groups with a golf cart full of drinks. And you just got to drive around the golf course all day long, deliver drinks and that's it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I can sure. do that. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> um, and that was fun. You know, it was like, I got to drive and there was nobody sitting next to me and golf carts aren't really performance vehicles, but you know, it was, <laughs> it was fun anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, that was it. I, and, and what's interesting is that same guy hired me five years later for a job at a gym that he was managing. And so again, the networking thing, right? Yeah, you made an five impression. Years later, <laughs> yeah, he reaches out and he's like, hey, do you want a job? We need somebody for the summer. Um, I was a freshman in college and I was like, yeah, of course. Oh. I can use the money. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah, I don't think I've heard that one yet. But yeah. uh, that's great. Well, Bill, thank you so much for taking time to be on oh, the thank podcast you. today. How can people find you? So our website is 40pb.com, number 40 and the letter P and the letter B. How I got a four character website. Fortunate. Pure luck. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's the easiest way. And there's a hit the contact form. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody about team leadership, employee engagement, any of that stuff, you know, our, our perspective is um, that the first level team leads, and that's who we focus on training, they have the most impact on employee engagement. They also have the most impact on company productivity. And so if you want more revenue, you want more code written, whatever that is, it's the first level team leads that actually have their fingers on the pulse and can make that happen. And that's who we focus on training. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank and you. thanks to everybody who joins our podcast every week. And we look forward to being with you again next time. Thanks so much. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, go to teamengagementpodcast.com. We also invite you to follow or subscribe to our podcast wherever you may be listening or watching. Is your business thriving? Go to tbs-score.com to find out. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.